okay, let's start. How to flung up uh, automation on Gherkin. My name is Lily Ormazova and I'm working for Grid Dynamics in St. Petersburg, Russia. And uh, today I came to you with uh, the better devices how to flunk automation using Gherkin. Uh, why flunk automation and why better devices we will talk about a, a little bit later. And uh, now let me just introduce myself. Who am I? I'm working in IT from 2001 and uh, in QE from 2002. I worked as a manual tester and uh, as automation tester and now I'm working as a QE lead slash manager for one of uh, the e-commerce projects in Great Dynamics. Why bad devices? For the guys who is not from Russia. In Russia, we have a um, very, very famous children's book named um, Bad Advices, the same. This is a book for unruly kids, for bad kids, uh, who is doing everything on contemporary, uh, on, on, uh, on contrary, sorry. sorry. Uh, and the author thought that if some kid We'll read this book with advices how to get D mark at school, how not to listen parents, uh, how to be rude with uh, their friends, and so on. That unruly kid, who is doing uh, on contrary everything, will read the book and will do everything in contrary and will be good. After this book, so uh, today I would like to make an experiment with you. Uh, I will give you such devices that could be included to hypothetical book, the same one for QE automation engineers. And you will be thinking if you are a good boy or girl or not. Uh, so if you are a good kid, you will be back to your work on Monday and you will be doing everything according to my advices. And you'll get your automation always read. Uh, why do you need this? For example, you are a test lead and you have no stories for now and uh, your team is boring without work. You should have something to do. Or, for example, uh, you want to show your customers the spectacular performance to update and to repair everything in your regression. Or it's just a sabotage, maybe. Uh, you want just uh, to make your regression red. Or if you are a good, uh, not good boy or girl, you will do everything on contrary and uh, you will not have your regression red at least uh, by these reasons. So, as I'm uh, already said, uh, I'm working for e-commerce projects in Grid Dynamics and uh, today's examples uh, will be from e-commerce branch. Uh, we will uh, search some product on Gherkin and put it to the cart. Uh, you can imagine this uh, hoodie as a project, this nice hoodie that I found on Amazon and I now want uh, such hoodie to my birthday. I'm a mom and a software test and nothing scares me. So, uh, as in a real book, we will be going from a simplest thing to a, a bit more complicated. And we will be going through uh, different levels, from a scenario level to test data management level. Uh, guys, I uh, have only 20 minutes, so uh, I would like to give you one advice per each level, because um, in the other case, uh, my time will be over. Number one, on scenario level. Uh, just a friendly reminder that our purpose today is to make our regression completely red. How can we reach this purpose using just scenario level? Very simple. Uh, just create very, very long scenarios. Do you remember what uh, we will have if something will be failed in the middle of the scenario? Um, 
the, the, yes, the uh, step will be marked as failed and all the following steps will be marked as not performed and the test will be read. So, the, um, the more long scenario we will have, the more probability we will have that everything will be read in this scenario and the test will be read. So, our purpose is reached. We have long scenarios and uh, the, our, our regression is read. A bit more complicated on steps level. Uh, who doesn't know what is the difference between explicit and implicit weight? You are lying, well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> implicit and explicit. Uh, do we have such uh, persons in the... Okay, I, I think we don't have uh, such persons, so I will not explain what is the different difference. Um, so my advice here is uh, use implicit weights. Uh, imagine that you are writing this uh, scenario with uh, implicit weights uh, here and there in the end, and in a month we could have optimistic or pessimistic scenario. Optimistic scenario, our developers decided to improve the performance. And now uh, our some buttons on the page are loading not during 10 seconds, but during 2 seconds. Our tests are still green, but, mm -hmm, but uh, now we are waiting spare eight seconds and uh, um, you can multiply eight to the count of your scenarios in the run and could think that maybe nobody will run the scenario because it is too long and our purpose is reached. A bit more complicated advice, uh, advice number three on methods level not so simple maybe. Uh, imagine that you are living with the same, uh, in the same framework with uh, some other team. One project but different teams in, the, on, in one framework. In team number one, some QE implemented a step when user clicks add to cart button and it is working uh, it, it clicks some add to cart button on some product page, for example. One day, this QE uh, came to work and uh, found that every scenario with the steps, with the step is red. Why? Thought this QE. Um, the, the first idea, something with the page. 404 error, for example. No. Page is okay. Or is okay. The, the next idea, something with the locator. No locator is on the place. So uh, the tests are red, but everything is okay. Why the regression is red? The right answer. Um, in the same, fro uh, the same framework, uh, another QE from another team implemented another step. Uh, that is clicking some buttons uh, on some page, but since we have a lot of buttons on the page, uh, it uh, implemented as the step with parameter, button name. But this QE number two have the same fantasy as QE number one, and that's why the step sounds the same with the only difference in this parameter, button name, add to cart. So our uh, Selenium see this first step and decided that add to cart is parameter uh, and uh, trying to find add to cart button on the page number two. We have no add to cart button on the page number two and the step is red. Real case from our project. So, um, what we should do to not, not to flunk your project? Uh, 
use the, sh the short scenarios, not long one. If you have some parameter inside your step, mark that I this is a parameter in some way, for example, with apostrophes. Uh, and uh, don't use implicit weights and no, no unneeded steps, please. So, um, let's go a, a bit further to test data management. Bad advice number four. How could we flunk the project using test data? The easiest and um, old school way to use a hard code. Uh, you, I think, can understand that when this test uh, has been written, everything was okay because uh, we had that uh, SKU ID on the place and the product price was uh, like this. But in a month, again, the test data updated and uh, again, optimistic scenario, the product, places, uh, product price has changed and the test is read. Uh, and more pessimistic scenario, we have no such product in the database anymore. The test is red still. Okay, that was the simplest way. And uh, everybody, I think, knows that hard code is not very good. Okay, uh, if not hard code, if we are querying our data from some database, uh, the first point, the database right, right. Even if at the beginning of the project you had the written da database right, it could be changed. And uh, in the base, best, best case, you will be updating your queries hard the code to storage procedures, for example, and it will take a lot of time. The point number two, um, in later times, uh, we had one application and one database and integration only from application to database. It, w it was good, but now uh, I think it's not very real scenario and uh, the real scenario is we have application and a lot of integrations with other applications and every other application uh, has uh, its integration with some database. And it is okay if all the database are relatives. But we can have Cassandra, for example, somewhere. Uh, so uh, if we are getting the data from the database, it could be very um, difficult to remember all this integration we have around. And the point number three, if even if the previous, previous two are okay, pulling the data from a database takes a long time. So we still have a chance to flunk our project. Uh, the third way to get the data is to use some uh, um, data file in your framework in XML or JSON or any other your favorite format and parse this file from your tests uh, so, what can we do to flunk the project if we have such a way to get the data? Uh, very easy, because if you are remembering about it and updating your data every day, it is okay. But if you don't remember about your data, uh, inventory or some other critical property could be changed and we will know it only after nightly run. Uh, the bad advice here, if you have such a way to get the data, and for example, some normal project in your file, uh, use this normal project everywhere. For example, you have 3,000 tests, and um, from these 3,000 tests, 2,000 tests are put in project to the cart, and then uh, doing something with this project. Use this normal project everywhere and if this normal project will be outdated, your regression will be read completely just because of this normal project. Uh, what you uh, should do on the contrary, never do it to flana 
flunk your project. Firstly, never negotiate with customer about the data that should never be changed. Uh, some golden data, for example. Uh, and uh, it could not be updated in the data database because you are using this data in your test. The other point, never locate a special person or even a team to manage the data. This data that could never be changed. And the third one, never even think about to implement a special pool where you could pick the data up by parameters. And the whole advice here, never take care of your data. If you will do it, you will flunk the project definitely. To sum up everything, on scenario level, to not to flunk a project. This is the good advice now. On scenario level, make your scenario simple and, and readable. The shorter the scenario, the better. On the steps level, use only needed steps and try not to use implicit weights. Okay, in some cases you can use implicit weights, but uh, think three times before using it, because uh, in most cases you can avoid it. M on the matters level, just remember about your teammates, and when you are implemented something, you should firstly uh, um, investigate the framework and uh, try to find the same maybe. And uh, on the last level, test data management level, just take care of your data and if it is possible, try to negotiate with your customer about um, separate team or at least separate person who will be managing the data. Thank you for your attention and it is time to questions. I have, thank you, I have this voucher for the t-shirt and uh, organizers said that it is very beautiful blue t-shirt. Who wants very beautiful t-shirt? <laughs> but you should ask me something. <laughs> So everything is clear? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I could uh, I, I could answer that questions. Ah, okay. We 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 have we have the real one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. Implicit and, impl uh, and explicit weights? Aha, uh -huh, okay, more examples. Hi, Yulia. Aha, uh -huh. uh, okay, uh, in my team, um, we are using like this. Uh, if it is um, about weighting of uh, appearing of some ele element, this is a definitely uh, explicit weight. But in some times, when we are integrating with some other application, for example, uh, as an example, we uh, have end-to-end uh, -end tests that are doing something on the web and then uh, waiting for some other application to be appeared and then doing something in other application, checking some um, state of order, for example. And um, we cannot wait here for appearing of this application because this is not only another page but completely another application. And here we are using the implicit weight because we cannot uh, do without it. Thank you. Please. Uh, with Gherkin data tables. <laughs> ah, good. Let me maybe. Oh. 
Here, for example, we have uh, only two lines data table, but uh, if uh, you will have not two lines here, but 20 lines, for example, it will not be supported easily, and um, it could, um, be, uh, could um, have you more close to your purpose. And uh, another example, if uh, you have the same table, table in several tests, for example, you have the story, and inside the story you have, um, for example, 20 tests, and every test use the same table. And uh, if you uh, hard code the table inside your story, not in table inside the framework, do you understand what, what I'm talking about? Uh, it will be supported not easily as well, so it could reach you to the purpose. And good, good advice here is uh, to make a separate file with the tables if the table is used uh, everywhere. And put the file to your framework and then uh, make a link here in, the, in examples to this table. And uh, in this case, uh, you can change only this table one time, not 20 times in your framework. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, uh, the time is up. Uh, you can continue in the hall. Mm. Ah. I, it is working like this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay.